This short video will review the concept of vapor pressure lowering. Vapor pressure lowering is a colligative property associated with solutions. That is, when a non-volatile solute is dissolved in a solvent, the vapor pressure of the solvent is lowered. So let's talk about vapor pressure for just a second. The, um, this particular um, container is a container that was evacuated and put in a pure, pure solvent, some liquid, let's just say water. And the water evaporated to the point that to reach the vapor pressure, which was about three on this pressure meter. And what that means is that the um, water um, left the liquid phase and entered the gas phase or the vapor phase um, until it achieved this equilibrium pressure. And at that point, the rate of the water um, escaping the liquid to the gas was equal to the rate of the gas returning to the liquid. So the total number of gas particles stays constant. Now, when you um, have the same device and rather than pure solvents, say pure water, you put in some aqueous mixture with a non-volatile solute, say some solid like salt or sugar, and you dissolve it in the uh, water, what you see experimentally is that the vapor pressure of that solvent is lower. The equilibrium condition is at a lower uh, vapor pressure. Now if we look at a snippet of a phase diagram, you can see that if you pick any, you uh, uh, take data for, uh, in this case, pure water versus some aqueous solution, and you compare uh, the vapor pressure, the equilibrium vapor pressure at, at some particular temperature, you see that the pressure uh, for water, the vapor pressure for water is going to be higher at any given temperature than for the uh, water which is uh, together in a solution. So it's an experimental fact that the vapor pressure is lower. Now uh, the reason is that as we've said previously the change in enthalpy of a solution is zero or about zero, uh, you know, very close to zero for most solutions because like dissolves like, that's how we end up with the solution. However, the entropy of the solution of course is increased. Therefore, there's an overall decrease in free energy of the solvent upon the formation of the solution. So since there's a decrease in the free energy of the solvent, and we know that at equilibrium the free energy of the vapor must equal that of the solvent, then the vapor pressure is lower. The solvent vapor pressure is lower in the solution, therefore, um, excuse me, the, the free energy of the solvent within a solution is lower, therefore the free energy of the um, uh, vapor must be as well, so we see this uh, phenomenon called vapor pressure lowering. Alright, so um, let's talk for a minute about uh, vapor pressures. The, this has been studied extensively, and somebody after uh, many empirical experiments, uh, Raoult, uh, realized that the vapor pressure of a solvent is proportional to its mole fraction in a solution, so we can quantitatively predict uh, what the new vapor pressure of the solution is going to be if you know the mole fraction of the solvent. So this is Raoult's law. The vapor pressure of the solution equals the mole fraction of the solvent times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent. That's what these letters mean. So sometimes I like to write this as the vapor pressure of the solution just so I'm clear in my head that I'm talking about the vapor pressure, the pressure of that one particular vapor associated with the solvent is equal to the mole fraction of the solvent times the vapor pressure of the solvent. Okay, so this would be the not symbol here is like the pure vapor pressure. All right, so that's Raoult's law. Another way you can write this particular relationship is in terms of the change in vapor pressure. And a lot of times with the colligative properties, we're talking about the change. What is the change? And so the change, delta, the change in the vapor pressure is equal to the opposite of the mole fraction of the solute times the vapor pressure of the pure solution. And so you can use either equation. You can end up with the same answer. If you want to figure out the change, you could just calculate the vapor pressure of the solution and um, subtract from it the pure vapor pressure, or you can get to it directly by calculating the mole fraction of the solute instead of the mole fraction of the solvent. You would do whatever is easiest, depend on what the question is or why you're um, trying to figure that out. So um, let's look at an example here. It says calculate the vapor pressure of water at 90 degrees Celsius for a solution prepared by dissolving 5 grams of glucose in 100 grams of water. The vapor pressure of pure water 
at 90 degrees Celsius is 524 torr. So the first thing we want to decide is which one of these two equations do I want to use? Well, it doesn't really matter, but in this case, the easier one would probably be just to use Raoult's Law, so I'll do that by way of this example. So Raoult's Law uh, states uh, the vapor pressure of the solution, which is what we want to know. The question is, what is the vapor pressure uh, when you dissolve 5 grams in 100 grams? So that's the solution. It's going to equal the mole fraction, in this case of water, because that's our solvent, times the vapor pressure of water. Okay, and it's going to be at this particular temperature. So they gave us the vapor pressure of water. You would just look it up if they didn't give it to you. Um, pure from a vapor pressure table, you can Google it or look in your book. And it's uh, 524 torr. So that's what we would plug in right there. The work here is just calculating the mole fraction of water. And so if you remember that, and I'm going to work over here now, the mole fraction, remember the definition of the mole fraction. In this case, it's the mole fraction of water. So it's just going to equal the number of moles of water in this particular um, solution divided by the moles of water plus the moles of um, the solute. In this case, it's sugar. And so you just need to calculate those moles. You're given the grams of sugar and the grams of water. And with that information, you can calculate the moles of water. So um, let me just stick it in this equation right here. It's going to be the moles of water, of course, is just going to be um, 100 grams of water times the um, inverse of the molar mass, which is 18 grams. And I'm leaving off the um, the you know the water word just to save space. And then the total, of course, is the moles of water, which is 100 grams. Uh, times one mole divided by 18 grams plus the moles of solute, which is just going to be five grams of the solute um, divided by the molar mass there, which is um, 180. I looked that up from the periodic table. Grams per mole for glucose. Plug that into your calculator, and you get that the mole fraction of water equals 0.995. So then to calculate the vapor pressure of the solution, you simply plug in the mole fraction, 0.995, times the vapor pressure of the pure solvent, which is 524 torr, and that equals 521 torr. It has been lowered or depressed.